Jermell Simon, The Upshaws, Netflix. It's the upcoming comedy series. We have them on for today's guest. Let's bring them on, guys. <laughs> Jermail, hello. Hello, hello. How you ladies doing? We're yeah. wonderful on this Feel Good Friday, Face yes, Feel is. Friday, all the Fridays. <laughs> I hear that. Yes, it all is. Right. It's, a, it's a little gloomy in LA, but we'll we'll make the best of it. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, they it rained today here also. Case in point for the turtleneck. So <laughs> now I feel overdressed. Because I'm looking at your shirt. I'm looking at your shirt and I'm like, wow, that's really awesome for Friday. So I kind of feel overdressed right now. <laughs> I had a jacket. <laughs> I had a brown jacket on. I was like, no, nah, this is kind of dampening the mood a little bit. So I'm glad, you know, I, I kind of yeah, matched the red a little bit. Yeah, yeah, loving I try, the flavor. You know? <laughs> yeah, you are, you are, yeah, you're bringing, you're bringing Fashion Friday. So thank you I'll so much. I'm trying to give you guys a little, a little jewelry, a little we something, something you know. Thank yeah. you so much for that. <laughs> Jermel, you play Bernard Jr. in the upcoming Netflix comedy series, The Upshaws. I do. How did the role come about? Um, well, you know, I, I auditioned for it just like any other role. So I just kind of assumed it was going to be, you know, in Hollywood, you hear so many no's and, you know, very rarely you hear, you know, your yeses. So you learn to just kind of do it and release it, do it and release it. And it was just, um, it was just like any other role in the beginning. I got the audition for my management. I went in to, uh, shout out to Kim Coleman, who cast me for this. I went into her office. Uh, I did my best, because I always feel like your best is enough. I yeah. did that. Um, and I released it, I let it go, you know? Um, but it was something about it when I left, where I was like, man, I feel I feel a different energy uh, toward this character, you know? Yeah. Um, so I had an urge to kind of want to do it more. And then sure enough, I got a call back like two days later and, um, I guess they could say the rest is history from there. You know, I had two auditions and then, you know, um, I booked it. So nailed it, nailed yep. it, nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> now, Jamil, you're you're also working with comedian Mike Epps yes. and Wanda Sykes. Did you guys ever get any work done on set? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I would say we had. So it, it was it wasn't really like work. You know what I mean? We laughed the entire time. The writers were amazing. Um, and then, of course, Mike and Wanda added their own spin to it with their delivery. And uh, it was hard. I could, I could say that. It, it was hard working with comedians. But it it brightened my day. I knew when I went to work, I was going to laugh. So, And then also cool. veteran actress Kim Bale. Yeah. What was that Ooh. like working with her as well? Um, yes. You know, first, First of all, I love Kim Fields. But in the beginning, uh, Kim almost got me fired. So, oh, <laughs> no, so what tell you. happened? Fill so the tea. I, I don't know if you, you guys know or not, but I play Kim Fields' son, right? So it looks like, I, it obviously looks like I can play her brother because Kim, yeah. Kim looks 25. So um, yeah, when I first came in, I had a full <laughs> beard for, you know, I was doing another project. So I had a full beard. So I looked much older. And when she first saw me, she was like, what? hold up. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I, <laughs> this is not a part of the brand. No. Uh, so um, yeah, it, it was a little, it's a running joke that we have now that she almost got me fired. But she's, she's like family to me now. She's, yeah. she's so nurturing and kind and she keeps me on my toes with everything. I even told her about this interview. I said, you know, I got a live interview tomorrow. So I got to get a little bit of your magic, you know, because she, oh. she's the best interviewer. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> And you know, and with that being said, how it all connects together, because we actually had Kim on as a guest over the holidays. Really? And we, uh, she was talking about her coffee and tea and, and all of those great things she has with the with the company. And so, yeah, so to be able to have you say that and, and then have you as a guest, so that, that comes kind of yes. full circle. Full yeah. circle, yeah. yeah, full circle. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I've definitely had her uh, signature blends by KF. That's, yes, that's good coffee. yes, <laughs> yes. yes really good and you have an incredible journey from being a Foot Locker manager um oh, wow. to, know that. yeah we know all this we know yeah. all the business <laughs> well, we did way. we did uh so a Foot Locker manager to reading doing a reading in front of Denzel oh, wow. I mean yes. how, how, did you, how did you get from that place to read it in front of Denzel Washington well, um, I always love shoes, you know, um, and back, I'm from Florence, South Carolina. Shout out to Florence, South Carolina, 843. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting a job in uh, Foot Locker in high school, and um, I moved to Virginia, north of Virginia, and they kind of transferred me over, and uh, they made me a manager or whatever. So 
that's how I, I did the uh, the Foot Locker thing. But I had always been auditioning, even working at Foot Locker. I would do, you know, local things in Virginia. I always tell people to try to, you know, own your city first before you go out oh, and yeah, do LA or whatever. Um, so I did a, a bunch of uh, acting in LA. I'm in uh, Norfolk, Virginia at first. And then, of course, I'm, I moved to LA in 2013. And I had always, uh, I had done some stage or a lot of stage actually in Norfolk, Virginia. So when I, by the time I got to LA, I was really hungry for the stage. So mm. again, I got an audition for my management uh, to audition for Corey Fences, uh, August Wilson's Fences. Um, I auditioned, I booked the role uh, and we had it, um, I think it was maybe like an eight week run. So we did it eight weeks straight. So I knew that wow. character like the back of my hand, you know? Um, and then just, it was just such a pleasure to work, to do an yeah. August Wilson piece. So apparently uh, LA, the LA Times were there. And um, so Vicki Thomas, who was casting the movie, uh, the film adaptation of, of Fences at the time, yeah. LA Times, I guess she saw the article and they, you know, they showed us and we got, you know, really good reviews. And then she called me in her office for a reading. And they were like, we're just gonna do a reading. Um, and my manager said they wanted to do a reading of Fences. So I had no idea. I was like, okay, well, I know it's like the back of my hand. I've done it for eight weeks. <laughs> so I go in there, I do my thing, and I left because, you know, whatever. All right. Right. And, okay. Um, I got in the car. My manager is like, do you know who you just read for? And I'm like, no. I mean, I, I read for the road. It's like, yo, Denzel Washington is doing the Fences movie, and they're looking for a Corey. And he was like, before you go crazy, before you go crazy, listen, they're not looking. They're not casting right now. They just want to hear it out loud because sometimes they do yeah. table reads, and they won't hear it, hear it out loud. So he said, hey, you have to do this reading on Sunday. So I said, okay, fine, you know, and he said, listen, Denzel Washington is going to be there. And oh. I was like, wait, hold up, wait. Wow. And, you know, that, that's a lot to process, you know. So uh, fast forward, I go on Sunday, I find out that morning that I'm actually going to his house. So then oh. I have to process that. So I'm driving like, how how is this happening right now? You know, yeah. so I remember driving in his gates. Uh, they, I thought for some reason that the gates were going to come, you know, they push out open. <laughs> So the gates, I'm like right at the gate because I'm already nervous and uh, mm -hmm. the gates come out toward me. So I almost like scraped my car and, oh. because I was just, I, and I froze up because I was so nervous. Um, yeah. I'm actually, you know, I'm actually going to Denzel Washington's house. Fast forward, his uh, assistant came and got me, brought me into the house. I'm shaking. I hear him behind me. And he, you know, welcoming me. Ah. I, can't turn around. I can't turn around. Denzel Washington is behind me. So. <laughs> And he, uh, but he's just like you imagine, you know, he was super nurturing, uh, super kind. Um, yeah. He, he really, I auditioned with him for about three weeks. Uh, I ended up eventually not getting the role. It was either me or, or Jovan Adobo, who, who did an amazing job on the film. Um, but I, I worked with him for three weeks. I, I worked with Viola Davis, him, the entire oh, cast. That wow. Day. So that was experience, an experience. Oh, that, that was it, awesome still, experience. It's yeah. surreal, even to this day. And I'm like, I, I tell that story and I'm, I'm still shocked that that happened. You know, right. I'm grateful for it, for sure. That's mind blowing. Jamel, yeah. does Denzel have the walk in real life? Did he walk in he with the walk? Okay, all <laughs> right, yeah. He has the walk, the talk, all of that. And I remember him the telling laugh, me, um, you know, the laugh, famous laugh. All of it. All of that. <laughs> he has all yeah, of that, everything you can imagine. Um, but I was walking, uh, I was leaving and I got lost because obviously he, his house is <laughs> 17 yeah. houses. Right. Um, you know. He was like, son, and I remember him telling me, son, you're lost right now. Like this, all of this one day will be yours. But right now, oh, you're lost. And I, wow. that stuck with me because I felt like that was his way of telling me that he believed in me. And, uh, and oh. I kind of, I, I kept going with that. Love it. What an awesome story. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Now, Jamel, we're glad you're Thank educated. You. With that being said, you have challenged yourself to read one book a week. What inspired you to do that? Uh, well, I've always been a reader, even even in uh, school. You know, I was in the I would score all these points on the accelerated reader program uh, back in elementary school, uh, and then towards like middle school, high school, it just wasn't. You know, I was trying to be cool, so it wasn't like the cool <laughs> thing to do to read books. So right. once I graduated, and I, I kind of moved to, uh, I moved to Virginia, like I graduated in May, I moved to Virginia in July, you know? And so it was, I moved to this state where no one knows me and I can kind of figure out my life without the, yeah. you know, peer pressure of whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I want to get, you know, get back in into books. And so I kind of slowly started reading it. And I think that um, I was just going through a really, 
I don't want to say tough time, but I was just trying to find myself in yeah. in just the world, you know, they're just trying to grow up, trying to be a man, you know? Yeah. Um, and I started reading um, a book called, uh, it was an interview with the devil. So it was giving you the devil's perspective on on life. And it sounds crazy, but it was just, it was teaching you how to use your own brain, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so then I started reading that book and I felt so enlightened and I started to use the knowledge that I got from that into real life and things started to really, you know, manifest for me. So I was like, you know, I'm, I, I need to keep this up because there's so many hidden jewels and gems in, in reading books, you know, yes. so that led to uh, me finding, uh, you know, Eckhart Tolle, you know, the power of now and understanding yeah. how important it is to be present. And so um, my spirituality and everything just started growing and growing. And I started to realize, wait, I'm becoming a better man and therefore I'm becoming a better actor, yeah. you know. And so I encourage all, you know, actors to really start to read, you know, we, it, we have to become all these characters and do all these things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, everything is happening right before your eyes. Yeah. Like today, I just saw a billboard of myself on um, Sunset Boulevard. And I just, oh. I was just, this you know what I mean? I'm just taken back so much by that. And I, I just remember to be present because sometimes we just, we forget to enjoy the ride. You know, we forget to be present for, for the now um, because they always say, you know, you're only as good as your last project. Right. But, I've learned to just release that just through the books that I've been reading to, to yeah. that helped me to just be like, just to be here in this moment. Like in this moment, I'm talking to Trisha and Tasha. And that's uh, it. Okay. Else. You know what I mean? Right. Love it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Love it. Yeah, I got inspired by that. Yeah. That's awesome. Love it. Shermel, we have Abby Moncour who says, hello, happy Friday to you. So I want to let yeah, you know. Friday. And you as a side hustle, um, did certified, you were certified fitness trainer, but you also have J Rambo Hit. It's an app, a fitness app. Yes. So yes. tell us about yes. that and, and, and yeah, give us some some um, information well, I, about I, that. I, I, I have been teaching. Um, I, I told myself when I turned twenty five. Like last year, I won't say my real uh, age. No, <laughs> no, I told myself that. You're not here. Uh, but that was years ago, you know. Um, yeah. That I wanted to be in the best shape of my life, and um, you know, I and I knew that that would help me, to, you know, with my acting. Everything kind of went back, you know, with my acting. So I was like, if I get in this quote unquote leading man's body, I'll get more work. And so I hired a trainer at Twenty Four Hour Fitness, and uh, I remember his name was Al. And me and Al worked for like six months straight. And I kind of got addicted to the training and the work. And I was like, yo, I can, yeah. I can do this. And I know the feeling I felt when I was doing it, I, I just felt like my higher self. You know, I just felt like I was turning into this version of myself that was uh, like 2.0, you know. Mm. And so I wanted other people to experience that. So then after that, I got certified on my own. So I started doing you know, one-on-one -on -one training. And I kind of mixed my, since I've been reading so much, I kind of mixed motivation and training because oh, my opinion, they kind of go yeah. hand in hand, yeah. you know? Okay. So I was doing that. And then um, I kind of, I, I, I have a lot of energy, you know, I'm an Aries, I'm a fire sign. And so I, I just got really bored with the one-on-one -on -one interaction and I needed energy, you know? So I started mm. teaching classes. So I would do the same thing I would do one-on-one. -on -one but I started doing classes uh, okay. with multiple people. Yeah. And then I, I started doing, I started to realize that people like, cause I would play good music, but I wouldn't, I wasn't really correlating the, the movements to the music, but I started to realize that people, I, I, you know, obviously if you can or can't dance, you love to dance, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so you need right. to judge of if you can or not, yeah. but everyone yeah. kind of yeah. somehow loves to dance, you know? So um, I started to do like squatting to the beat. So the song, uh, we would squat to the beat, punch to the beat. So then people start to get distracted by actually working out. You know, they were actually having fun because it seems as if they were dancing, but they were actually doing, by the time they left, 150 squats in the class. You know, they're wow. still the next day. And so um, <laughs> when the pandemic hit, I couldn't really teach, obviously. And so yeah. I started doing live Zoom classes. And then the Zoom classes turned into um, uh, me developing an app because I got super burned out by doing the class five times a day and I was trying to do oh, yeah. you know, everything else I was trying to do. So I was like, hey, if I do uh, pre-recorded classes, they can do it on their own time, three o'clock in the morning oh, if you yeah, want to, you know? Cool. So um, then, you know, I developed that. So it, it's called jrambohit.com uh, or jrambohits with okay. the S.com. 
Um, and I have, you know, over 40 videos. Uh, we have five Ooh. minute, 10 minute, yeah. 20 minute, 45. Uh, so I tell people just kind of work your way up, uh, you know, from five to 10, 10 to 15. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as long as you're moving, you're winning. And so I right. think what people like about it the most is, again, I just add a lot of motivation uh, yeah. just from the books that I read and the things that help me. I think if it helps me, you know, it can help the next person. So Right. Just the time to drop all those COVID by. pounds that yes. a lot of people gain in the yeah. pandemic. Yes. <laughs> a reader who's right. physically, a, a reader who's physically fit. I mean, you're on it, right? <laughs> right. I try to be. <laughs> now, uh, Jamel, we like to have fun with our guests. So we have this thing uh -oh. called rapid fire questions. We ask you a series of questions and you can say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. 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 Your favorite subject in school was? Reading. Ah, should have known that. <laughs> first job. <laughs> right. Your first job. My first job was Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. My cousin was a manager. Okay. Eric yeah, that was, my, yeah. that was my go-to place before I went vegan. I do miss the Chick-fil-A. I do. I, I, I'm like a half vegan. But yeah, I'm okay, half. half. Day. Yeah, like my husband, he's half vegan too. I'm trying yeah, to get him to convert, but he's taking too long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so your number one pet peeve? Uh, tardiness. I hate when people oh. are late because I'm such a stickler for time. Like You tell me to be there at 3, I'm there at 2.55. So, uh, okay, well, don't judge me if I ever have a project with you. <laughs> you know, God is still working on me. I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Your dream acting role? Uh, my dream acting role is to work alongside Denzel Washington again. Ah. Uh, on screen this time. Okay. I like that. I like right. that. All right. And then your favorite downtime activity? Favorite downtime activity? Uh, meditation. Meditation. Oh, that's a good one. Meditation. You can call that an activity. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one, though. I like that. Yeah, yes. that's a good one. And and we wanted to share with you, we have a Mike Epps story that we met him some years ago. And it was a red mm. carpet event. And we had to interview <laughs> Mike Epps. And actually, I became lightheaded. <laughs> so instead of me thinking, like, I'm going to pass out, my first thought was, I cannot pass out because Mike will have me in a comedy sketch soon enough. So that was my thought. So I, tried, I, I, I did pass out because I really concentrated on not passing out. But yeah, that's our little inside joke right. that we have. Exactly. I, he probably would have you on. Yeah, you I, I, I would have I would have been material. Definitely been Most material. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, he would have made sure you was so, okay first, though. Yes, definitely. Okay, the Upshaws, we know because, you know, we've got you, we've got Jamel Simon, we've got Mike Epps, we've got Wanda Sykes, we've got Kim Fields. Yes, we yes. know that it's going to be fantastic before our viewers. Why should we watch the Upshaws? Uh, well, I can't say too much. I don't want to give it away, but yeah, uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, it's family oriented. Um, as you guys can see from the trailer, Mike and Wanda mm -hmm. go back and forth, you know, like some Fred and Esther yeah. thing, um, Sam for the Sun. Um, and, and we talk about <laughs> real things. We talk about real topics, you know what I mean? That I think in the black communities, black homes of color, we, yeah. we need to talk about, you know? So it's the, it's the funny, but it's also the real, you know, at the same time. So yeah, okay. those are the reasons why I think. All know. right, guys, don't. <laughs> Don't forget to watch the upcoming comedy series, The Upshaws. We are looking forward to watching it. And then we have Tonya, uh, Lynn, and Deborah. They're on here as well saying hello to you. Hello. And this has Guys. been such a great time with you. You yeah. must come back and see us. Thank you. Yes, I will. For for sure. Yes, thank, thank you, you for taking you know, you're welcome. Thank you for taking time to visit with the Twins and Media. Until next time, you have a wonderful uh, Friday and the rest of your weekend. Yes. You All right, Jamil. Nice talking so to you. Much. All right. All right. Talk Have a good weekend. You.